Gentlemen, uh, Wanakam, Namaste, Namaskar. I'm uh, Rajesh, and I'm sure uh, some of you would have seen my videos earlier in YouTube uh, through HIMT. And, uh, I'm coming after a long time, so let us again uh, look into uh, some small concepts of chart work. I'm planning to do a concept. Uh, uh, analysis or <clears throat> discussion and then we'll look into how to solve a problem in uh, chart work, particularly for second mid candidates. Uh, this topic which I'm going to choose is uh, horizontal sextant angle. I'll be breaking into small modules. Let me first teach you uh, on PPT. It will be much better. Uh, the presentation is much better. And then I'll take you to uh, a second module, which will show me solving the question on a real chart. So you can uh, learn the concept. And then later on, I'll show you exactly how to go on a chart as well. So this is the first uh, module, which will take me through PPT. Let me just start uh, my PPT. Horizontal sextant angle is uh, quite a common question. It is not only for uh, second mates, it comes for mates candidate also. And uh, they are uh, used in uh, BS in nautical science, uh, terrestrial and coastal navigation question as well. Let us quickly look at uh, how uh, we go through a horizontal sextant angle. And uh, we'll discuss uh, how we decide on. Uh, Concluding that yes, I have to do with the HSA method. I'm taking a question uh, which was uh, for second mates. So that will be my reference. And that is based on chart number BA5072. I have not talked, uh, typed the full question. I've just uh, given a brief of that question. So it says the vessel was anchored south of uh, Y stack and it does the following observations. This is the first slide, which gives me a bearing of 298 degree corpus. The second light and the third light. And the question asks me to find the position of the vessel. And then finally, compass error provided. These were taken at the same time. So all the three observations were taken at the same time. Uh, whenever you get a question, your first job is to analyze which concept should I use? So that is why uh, students take a lot of time to realize which concept I'm supposed to use. I'll give you a couple of clues that will help you how to start with a question. You can uh, use this kind of uh, analysis for each and every question of chart work. So I always suggest please spend one minute, one, one, one and a half minutes, two minutes just to analyze I'm sure it will help you to be faster on the solution rather than jumping and uh, realizing later that you have taken the wrong uh, concept. So let us look at the question. It says vessel was anchored. So obviously it is stationary. It's a constant position. And uh, the question mentions that compass error was same for all the three observations. What is the meaning of this? Let us try to understand. Okay. I'm going to justify uh, what all points you will be looking into for uh, selecting this concept in the next slide. Before that, a uh, quick tip for all the students, particularly those people who are writing the exam for the first time. Please use some clues and decide what concept I'm going to use because most of the time deciding the concept is a main challenge for the majority of the students. This is not only for BSc, it is valid for second mates and mates also. So please spend some time, one or two minutes to uh, analyze. And there is some sequence and steps which you can follow. If you do it, you will you will be in a systematic approach and you will be faster and you will do it correct on the first time itself. Rather than doing a mistake, realizing this was not the concept, then again rubbing back. That is going to take a long time. And you should realize for a mates and second mates candidates, each question, the time you will get is approximately 20 minutes. So you'll have to finish that question. Okay. Let's quickly look into this, how I'm going to use the clues in the question to decide what concept I'm supposed to do. 
If you look at the topic HSA, I mentioned simultaneous fix. Please remember, HSA method can be used on a running fix also. But majority of the questions comes as simultaneous fix. A few questions come as running fix. Let me deal with the majority question, which is simultaneous. So what do you mean by simultaneous? This is what I can tell you simple words that when two or more position fixing tools, when they are given the same time, then it is called a simultaneous fix. What is a position fixing tool? Fixing tools are broadly into just two categories. One is a position line and a position circle. You will see all your fixing tools will end up in one of them. It is either a position circle or a position line. So I'm giving you two tools at the same time. So it is called a simultaneous fix. Now, this question, you can see he has given me three compass bearings of three different lighthouses that two at the same time. So whenever I get a question like this, my first attempt should be to check, can I convert it into two bearings? And I can plot it directly on the chart and get a fix. So important thing to remember, please do not plot any bearings on your chart, it has to be only the true bearing. So you'll have to convert. You cannot plot compass. You cannot plot gyro. You cannot plot magnetic. So always please convert into true bearing. So this should be my first attempt. If I can do it, how should I do it? For me to convert compass into true, we all know we need variation and deviation. And an algebraic sum of V and D gives me error, which is called your compass error. So where can I get variation? If you look at your question paper, it might be given to you individually in the question itself. If not, it might be on the top notes in the question paper, which is common for the full question paper. If these two are not available, then the last choice for you is to go to the compass rows, which is nearest to your position. And please calculate that by applying your annual variation for this particular year. Let us say 2022, then you'll have to calculate for 2022. This will be your first shot. Okay, I got variation now. The next is the deviation. Deviation can be obtained from deviation card. But the most important thing you should remember, deviation card is made for some heading. So that means the heading of the vessel at that moment, when you took the three compass bearings, that is what it means. So I need the heading. If the heading is provided to you in the question itself, then this whole problem turns out to be a simple conversion. Please convert all of them into two bearings and plot the position on the chart. So your job is done. But the problem starts is when the heading is not given to you in the question paper. So the moment your heading is not given, Heading could be anything. He can give you true heading or magnetic heading or whatever, compass heading or whatever he can. So if he does not provide for you, you cannot use the deviation tool. Hence, I cannot get my deviation. I cannot convert into true. So that means my first initial attempt to convert to true bearing fails. So then what should I do? In such cases, my next step is we'll try by horizontal sextant angle method. So we will see what are the methods. There are totally five cases. If you split them into individual cases, I can split them into five different cases. And uh, we'll be looking at one case today. It is not possible to do all the cases in a single uh, short video. So I'm going to look at only one case. So we'll see what is that one case. Now, there is a small catch here. Horizontal sextant angle can be also called as horizontal angle. Why this difference? If you use a sextant to measure the angle between the two lighthouses, it is called horizontal sextant angle. If you use some other means, it is called horizontal angle. What is the other mean? The mean is giving you compass bearings of two different lighthouses. So since a single instrument was used, I can find the difference between the two compass bearings and that will also give me horizontal angle. So that is why a common term of horizontal angle can be used. Now a condition is this cannot be more than 180. 
all it means is if you get an angle more than 180 degree that means you are looking at the wrong side of the vessel you are always supposed to look at your shorter angle so by chance if you get an angle more than uh, 180 please subtract by 360 and look at the shorter angle so what do you mean by shorter angle it will be evident in a couple of slides from now i'll be showing you your, your uh, compass rows so we'll see that and we'll confirm so what I have done right now is gone through the concept. So how I'm going to utilize this concept in this particular question which we started. Let us quickly see. Now the reason for me to show this extent is uh, slowly uh, I think uh, it's very very evident that uh, we are losing the track of this instrument called sextant. So those people unfortunately who have not got the chance of seeing it physically which actually you should find out. This is a small uh, picture about uh, this extent. So I'm not going to uh, discuss about this extent that comes under bridge equipment. So I'm not going to discuss about it. But just for those people who didn't have an opportunity to see this physically, this is your sextant. Okay. So let us continue with this question again. I'm going to use that question and look at the clues. So let us see what clues I can use here. The question which I uh, chose, uh, the three lighthouses, it is very evident that all of them were taken at the same time. So that means I've got position fixing tools at the same time. So it is a simultaneous fix. Obviously, because it was anchored and the question did not give you the heading. But when all the three bearings were taken, obviously, it is a very short interval of time, so the heading would have been same. So for me, in the question, no heading was given. So there is no question of me converting that into your true bearing. So that is why I'm going to use HSA method. Now, before proceeding with any HSA method, I should be careful about the questions. Uh, let me show you this particular question a little bit later. You will realize that uh, there is a land on one side and you are in water. So obviously your vessel is going to be only on the water. So there is no question about it. But there are questions which can give you with an island. So that means you will have water on both the sides. So logically you will have to decide which side are you going to be. And that can be found out by a simple uh, check by using your uh, compass list. I'm going to show you how, how to uh, do that. This check you'll have to do, otherwise you can do a wrong uh, calculation or wrong plotting of your fix, or you might be confused. So to avoid this confusion, I'm going to use the compass bearing on a compass list. So let us quickly see, and I'm going to use just examples, and we'll see, okay. So I'm going to take a compass, Please remember compass rows, what you see is only true. But still I can use it to judge using this compass bearings. Even though it is true, but I will still use it. Just quickly see how to do that. I'm going to give you just two examples of two lighthouses, which is not in the question, but it can be on a random question. Let us say that uh, I have a lighthouse which was bearing 330 compass and 030 compass. So how to judge which side of these two lighthouses my vessel could be, even though this is a, a two uh, bearings what is shown in the compass, well, I'm still going to use it because the errors will be always within the limits only, maybe 10, 20 degrees, whatever what it is. So I'm going to put myself at the center of the compass vessel. This is what you should do. And then I'm showing you a lighthouse which is 330. So this is the compass bearing of that lighthouse, but I'm using two. Still, we can take a call on uh, what is the probable location of your vessel. So the next one, which I said was 030. So this is your 030. Now, please look at this. By looking at this diagram itself, even though I had given you compass bearings of 330 and 030, I can still figure out that my vessel's position is approximately south of these two lights. And when we proceed with the question, we'll always join these two lights with a baseline. 
So this is very evident that my vessel is south of this baseline, which is in the yellow color. And what is the horizontal angle? Horizontal angle always has to be the shorter, shorter angle, not the bigger one. You can see the bigger side also. That means on an azimuth, I can measure on the reverse side also of my vessel, which I am not facing this lighthouse. I can get an angle of 300, 300. But that is not the angle I should, I should be looking at. I should be looking at the shorter angle, which is basically 60 degrees. So uh, one clue I've given you, if you mistake, by mistake, you calculate 330 minus 030, which is 300. Horizontal angles cannot be more than 180 degrees. So you will have to do 360 minus 300. That will again give you 60 degrees. But if you look logically here, the shorter angle is also 60 degrees. So this is the example I'm going to show in animation. Then I will take you through the question of that uh, MMD uh, paper, which we had initiated. So let me take you through animation of this question, like 330 and 030. Let us look at that. I told you there are uh, five different cases on a HSA, which I will not be dealing. I'll be dealing only with one case. This one case specifically is theta less than 90 degrees. So this particular case gives me only one position circle. It will give me only one position circle. That is a position fixing tool, one of the tools. So let us take an example. Let us say 8 o'clock. These were the three hypothetical lighthouses, X, Y, and Z. I've given you 330 and 030. I'm going to show you the example with X and Y lighthouse. Let us quickly see how I can go ahead and use this concept. The question was for me to find out position at 8 o'clock and the compass. So I'll run you through both the processes. Let's look at the steps. So these are the two hypothetical lighthouses which I saw when I was an anchor. The horizontal angle between X and Y is basically the difference between 330 and 030 which is 60 degrees, which I showed you in the previous slide of your compasses. Okay. This is what is called theta. So uh, if you look at the case one, you can see theta is less than 90. That is the only case I'm looking at. So theta is 60 degree. So obviously it's less than 90 degree. Now I'm going to find something called alpha. These names are uh, names you can use at theta alpha. It is valid. Some books might show you the same thing also. But you can use that as a tool for you to start the question. I'm supposed to use a calculate alpha, which is always 90 minus theta. So I'm getting a value of 30 degrees. And I'm going to use this alpha to solve the full problem. Now, uh, if you want to look at the basis of this uh, complementary angle, it is a geometry theorem. Uh, it is a concept in geometry, which I'm not going to discuss right now. Uh, this is how you solve it. But there is a concept. The concept uses this uh, method of uh, finding a complementary angle and going for the solution. Okay. So my first step is I'm going to join the baseline. Okay. This was the same baseline which I showed you in your compass of rows also. So I'm going to join this. I told you lighthouses can be uh, on a land which is not having water on one side. So obviously you will know that you'll be only on the water, but they could be on some islands also. So my position could be on any side of this yellow baseline. For me, it is important to decide where am I. So I'm going to look at some logic. And this logic I told you can be done from the compass rules. We already seen choices. I could be north of this baseline or south of the baseline. But the last slide where the compass rows were shown, I used 330 and 030. I put myself on the center of the compass rows, which clearly told me that I am on the south of this baseline. Okay, I am on the south of this baseline. So my logical position is south. So the moment I decide I am south of the baseline, I am going to take this case one, which is theta less than 90. In this case, I am going to use the value of alpha, which is 30 degree, and I will be drawing something towards my side. Towards my side is south of this baseline. So let us see what I am going to draw. 
I'm going to draw one line each from X-ray in Yankee. And that line has to make an angle of alpha from the baseline. So please see how it is done. I'm going to draw this. You can use a protractor. Please measure the angle. And this angle will be 30 degrees for this question. So I'm going to draw this new line called x, x prime, which is 30 degrees. The same thing I'm going to do from Yankee also. Same 30 degrees. So I have drawn these two lines towards my vessel. This is important because theta is less than 90. I will draw it towards my vessel. These two imaginary lines will intersect at a point which is called Charlie. Charlie for me is a center of the position circle which I am going to draw. If you look at the first line itself, this procedure of theta less than 90 gives me only one position circle. So I am going to take Charlie. So please take Charlie as the center. Then what is the radius? Radius is any of the two lights. That, that means is Charlie X-ray is the radius or Charlie Yankee. If you have drawn properly, you will see both of them will be exactly the same. And I'm going to put my compass and draw a position circle. This is your position circle one. With a set of two lighthouses or with a set of one horizontal angle, I can draw one tool, which is your position circle one. The meaning of position circle is your vessel's position can be anywhere on this circle. Now, you could have drawn a full circle, but uh, we know it is not necessary. Why? Because logically, we have decided that we are south of these two lighthouses and the baseline. So, if you want, you can draw a full circle. And make sure the circle always passes through both the lighthouses. That is a condition. If not, then that means you are doing a small error. You need to find out, check whether the angles what you have plotted is correct or not. So maybe the center position is not accurate. That could be the reason. This could be a problem on a uh, chart which is photocopied also. So it is possible. So please be careful. Okay. Now, I am going to take uh, this example forward, but I am not going to solve the full question uh, for your uh, uh, next uh, set of lights. I'm sorry, there's a small uh, error on the Zulu. Zulu is this light. Please don't bother about it. Zulu is this light. So I've just taken X-ray Yankee and Zulu. We have just solved X-ray Yankee. In the previous slide, we have solved X-ray Yankee. Similarly, I would have solved X-ray Zulu also. So obviously, this will also have a baseline. So you should agree with me that I can get one position circle for X-ray Yankee and I could get one more position circle for your Yankee Zulu as well. So when I have two position circles at the same time, obviously it is a simultaneous fix. So I would have got uh, PC1 and PC2. Both of them will intersect at two places. Please remember one of the places is correct. The other place is wrong. Why? Because Obviously, the other place is on the lighthouse. So the moment you do two position circles at the same time, I've finished and I've got a fix with me. So this would have been the procedure. So I've shown you uh, how we go ahead with X-ray Yankee. Similarly, you would have done the same thing for X-ray, uh, sorry, Z Yankee and Zulu. So this is what you would have done. So I have finished the first part of the question. Okay, finding the position. So all I have to do is find the lat long of this and give uh, give the answer of the exam. I'm going to show you uh, how uh, this particular question, MD question, looks like on the chart. I'm going to show you that, and then I'll show uh, I'll solve a hypothetical question on the chart also, which is on the PPT as well. And in the second module, I'm going to really take you into a paper chart, and I'll show you the same procedure. Why? Because you need to know uh, how exactly you feel when you really take a pencil and a chart and start drawing. So this is completely uh, animations. So this is the question. Please remember the question in uh, MMT was asked about this Abeka's light, this Weistad, and your Kaseboga. These were the three lighters. I'm going to point out these three lighters. This is Abeka's light. The light is here with your uh, violet uh, dewdrops. And the second was Weistad South. So Weistad South, I'm pointing with my uh, cursor. That is Weistad South. We've got two lighthouses and the South light. And third one was your Kasevarga. So when I start the question, 
I have to solve the theta and then alpha for these two lights by joining the baseline. Similarly, I'll have to do the same thing for these two. And when you look at the question here, with the bearings which was given to you in the MMD question, it is very evident that you cannot be on the north of these two baselines. Why? Because it's full of land. So I know that I'm somewhere south. So I'm somewhere here. This is not the position. I'm somewhere here. And this is where I told you you should be careful. Some questions come with islands. So when you have islands, you could be on the north side of the baseline also. This question was an easy one where I don't have much to decide. I know I'm already south. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the logical conclusion of this particular question. So this particular question, again, I'm putting on the center of the compass rose. Um, I think the bearing was 298 compass. So the first lighthouse, Abrikas, and the Y stat was uh, 009, if I'm not wrong. It doesn't matter, it's somewhere there. And uh, the third light, Kasebaga, was 079, I guess. We'll look at the values. Yes, this was uh, 298, sorry, 007 and uh, 078. Okay. These were the values. So you can very easily see if you try to correlate with the chart also. I know that I cannot be north of these lighthouses. So I'll be finding theta between these two lights first. This will be called theta 1 and this will be called theta 2. Obviously, every time I find theta, I need to convert it to alpha, so I can call it alpha 1 and alpha 2. This particular readings gave me a theta 1 of 71 degrees, and it gave me theta, uh, I'm sorry, theta 2, theta 2 of 69 degrees. Okay. Both these angles are less than 90. So the case, what we uh, went through in uh, two slides back, it is valid for this case. So we'll look into this later. later. So this is your baseline, what you're going to draw, and uh, which evidently tells me that I'm south of these lighthouses. There's no doubt about it. So when we proceed with the question, the same question, I would have drawn the baseline, theta 1 is 71, and theta 2 is 69, for which I have written alpha 1 and alpha 2 also. So you'll be proceeding with the question like this. Uh, these uh, continuation of this, I'll show you in the paper chart. Till now, whatever I've done, I've shown you as a concept. But I'm going to run you through one sample question, which is not the same MD question, it's a different question, where I've solved it full on this PPT itself. That will give you a very good idea to how to complete the question. And uh, first finding the position, and then later on finding the composite elements. So I'll let, you, let me go through that. Okay. So I have taken a sample question. This is a sample question. I've given you one light, which is 230. I'll show you this lighthouses in the chart also. And there is a third. So this is a sample question, which was created and solved purely on the chart, which is on your PPT. So these are the three values. Let us quickly see. My job is to find the vessel switch. Let me go through this on the lighthouse. Okay. Theta 1. Sorry, uh, lighthouse one was two three zero, lighthouse two was three zero zero, and three was zero zero five. This is the first lighthouse on the bottom left with the blue color indication. Please remember the star which I put is only for identification. The actual lighthouse is exactly at the bottom tip of the land, so that is two three zero. This is the second lighthouse which I'm showing here, and this is the third lighthouse. So this big stars are only for indication. I have marked with the colors also, just to correlate with the values given. So my first job is always as usual. I will join, join the baseline between the first two light and the second uh, set of light also. So one by one, let us see. Theta 1, if you look at this, it is 70 degrees. So alpha 1 is 20 degrees. I am going to draw this. By looking at this question, I don't have to do any logical decision. You all should agree that on one side is a land, so other side is a water. So I might be always on this eastern side, but you can do it with compass rows also. You can do the same thing on your compass rows. You will find out you will be east of this particular baseline. So there is no doubt about it. I'm going to draw 
the lines, the two imaginary lines to find my center of cohesion circle towards my vessel. So I'm going to do 20 degrees here towards my vessel. Again, 20 degrees here towards my vessel. So I found out the center. This center, please use it with your compass with a radius of either of the lighthouses and both of them should match and I'm going to draw a position circle. So this is my first position circle, PC1. Now let us go for the second set of lighthouses. I'm joining the baselines. The value comes as 65 degrees theta 2 and your alpha 2 is 25. I'll be doing the same thing. When you go into compass rows, you will see that you are on the southern side of this baseline also. This is not out of order. And I'm going to draw the same thing. Your alpha 2 is uh, 25 degrees. And then one more 25. This is your center. Please draw one more circle. You can see whenever you have a position circle, they will always intersect at two points. Obviously, that ambiguity can be resolved by a little bit of common sense here also. This is my fix. I'm sorry. This is my fix. The other intersection has to be on the lighthouse. So uh, I'm sure I'm not there. So this is my fix. Please find the lateral and give the answer. So this would have been the normal process you would have solved this question. My uh, next step of this question is to find the compass element. It could lead you to one more. They can ask you the deviation of the compass also. They can ask you that also. I'll just run you through those two steps as well. Again, I'm taking a hypothetical example that I have these three lights. I found out uh, what is my fix. Once my fix is obtained, what I'm supposed to do is, since I know this is my true position, and if I stand from here and take the bearing of the lighthouse, I will realize that I can join these two positions, my position and the lighthouse position. That will give me the true bearing of first lighthouse. I can do that for the second one also, and I can do that for the third lighthouse also. Now the question had given me three compass bearings. Now I have three true bearings. Please compare them, each one of them. If you have draw, drawn the question uh, perfectly accurate, you will see all the comparisons will be same. That means the error what you get will be exactly the same. But uh, that is slightly unlikely. Uh, majority of the times you'll get some value difference. So don't bother about it. The value will be quite close. But then what you're supposed to do? Once you compare, please note down the three errors. If they are different, please find the average of three errors and write in the exam. Don't write one of them. Uh, it is better to give an average. I'll just show you an example. Let us take an hypothetical values of the same question, the first question which I gave you. So this is 330. Let us say I got 332. This one I got this one. So you can see the errors are slightly different. Two of them are same. One of them is different. It's better. Uh, the approximation is much better if you give an average. So. Just add all of them and divide by 3, you'll get 2.3 degree east is your composite. Now they can proceed with this question or stop here also. So if they stop here, please write this answer and give it to them and your question is done. But what if they ask you deviation? Please remember at any spot when you're standing at that instant, your variation is not going to change. So you can get your variation. So please apply this variation to this error. And you can write the deviation. So this is the end of a question which is typically asking you uh, for you to find a position and uh, is asking you error and is asking you deviation. So this takes you, runs you through the full process. As a reminder, I've taken only one case which is theta less than 90. So for that case, we have tried to solve a question for you. I'll uh, come back with the next module, which will be a continuation of this, uh, where we will be uh, solving on a real chart exactly the same question which was given in MM. The lights which were uh, using Weistad, Abecas, and Kasselberg. And that is on chart of BA5072. So that's it for now, which uh, has uh, gone through the steps in the concept. 
So once you understand the steps on the concept, it will be very easy for you to go on the chapter. So I'll uh, see you back on uh, next module, which will be with the chapter. Okay. Uh, thank you and uh, Namaskar.